And that was a, uh, what was it, 28 minutes last game? I uh, 31 minutes. 31 minutes. Even. Okay. 31 minutes last game. Let's see if Najin can break their record. All right. Lulu will be the ban. First from Incredible Miracle. Um, not really sure about that one. That's, That's an interesting They didn't ban. ban it last game, and it's not really a champion that Najin has shown a ton of affinity for. Unless it's something that Tank is really good with that we didn't know about. It Perhaps. would make sense with his play style that he would be a good Lulu player. I think his shirt just says Stanford Ullman. Let's I see. see. It zooms out a bit. All right. Lissandra well, banned against Duke. All right. Well, Reasonable. No, I mean, there was no Lissandra ban last game, so this is a really big difference in IM's pick ban. Yeah. While LeBlanc banned out second. So are they going to take out Maokai or Rek'Sai as their final ban, Najin? Let's see. Because I am not going to ban Kalista too, because that would be a huge pickup for OQ. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see Sonstar try it. I mean, you have to first pick the Maokai. Why are they banning Zareth? This is so strange. Yeah, we've seen Tank be good on Zareth, but so has Frozen. And he just played a great Twisted Fate game, too. And I am first picked Zareth in their last match against Jynair. Yeah. This, uh, these bans really make no sense. The Lulu is really weird, too, because Najin is just not a big Lulu playing team. All right, Kalista is going to be the final ban from Najin, and so pick the Maokai. Yeah, well, but that gives over the Rex side. What do you want to... Oh, I mean, you get Sejuani. Pick the Maokai. It's, it's way too important. Yeah, they're going to first pick it. Najin could take on that. Najin could take Rek'Sai and Sejuani right now, though, and just play yeah. Rek'Sai top. You know, unfortunately, that's the uh, that's what you deal with when you have Lilac, who needs to be on Maokai, or he's in big trouble. It is a power pick right now among a variety of teams. It will be yeah. again later tonight as well, as we see Marin, who's been very oh, successful yeah. on Maokai as of late. But even so, a lot to consider right now. Do you take the Rek'Sai? Do you take the Sejuani? Watch. Really performed last game on Sejuani, and we've seen him not be so great on Rek'Sai in the past. So. Well, I wonder if Duke can play that top Rek'Sai. I think the Sejuani is a, is I'd be a good confident. choice for watch. I'd be I'd be confident in Duke playing anything right now. He's been so <laughs> outstanding. True. That is true. Why not just let him have a crack at it? They're already up 1-0 right now. We'll see if they decide to go with. Let's see. Oh. oh, okay, Thresh. All right. So Ares will probably be taking that Rek'Sai then. Most likely. So they gave up actually a lot right here. Uh, they're trying to shut down, of course, the power pick in Kalista as well as Frozen's champion pool. So apparently, yeah. Najin's not too worried about anything else that IM can bring to bear, even that very powerful Rek'Sai pick. And looks like it might be another Nautilus jungle for Ares, although... I wouldn't be surprised at all if they swapped it up and did a, a support Nautilus this time, too. Yeah, Rek'Sai would be the better pick. Tucson, the king of bizarre supports this season. Yep. He was a he was a late challenger to the crown after Wraith held it early with his <laughs> Sejuani and uh, Syndra support picks. Mm. The Syndra support was really good, actually. Well, out of weird supports, it's the only one to win a game. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, we can't really call Vagar a weird support. It became very legit, and then it became very nerfed. <laughs> All right, so Sivir will be the takeaway. Not going to let OQ have that. So hard engage yeah. or incredible miracle right now. How risky does Najin want to play this? What is OQ's solution into this Syndra? Jinx. Jinx Thresh. Mm, I wouldn't play Jinx against Let's do it. Full engage composition like this. I would go. Put down the traps. Lucian. You back away. Lucian or Corky. Oh, oh. I saw the Jinx hovered over first. Reading minds. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, that immobility with Jinx, though, can really be problematic against Maokai and charging in there with a Sivir ultimate. Definitely could be. Yeah, Lucian is. Uh, Probably the more logical pickup. I suppose it's safer, huh? And yeah, why not give uh, Tank TF again? It worked so well Ooh, last time. I don't know about blind picking this TF. You're really going to save your top laner for your last pick. You already know it's Maokai. Hmm. A little bit of cockiness coming in from Najin. 
Because you're still really vulnerable to assassins, and they hovered over that Zed in the last one, and if Frozen's a good Zed player, he really can abuse that matchup. Watch them go for Rumble support here. Could go for Urgot again, but you're gonna have the same troubles that you did in the last game in terms of that wave clear and opening up a lot of timings for tanks TF to make plays on the side lanes. But yeah. again, Najib playing to their strengths. And we've seen Tucson play that uh, support Kale. He did it last match. It didn't work terribly well. Got blown up very, very fast. But that was against a very hard engage comp. Well, it's not like Najin has a shortage of a gauge here either. Yeah, but it's not quite the, uh, you know, everybody just diving in at you kind of thing. It's a little bit more uh, spread out. I think Dari would be a good pickup, though. Yeah, a little bit more maneuverability. And there's the Leona mm -hmm. adding another layer of engage right there. And, and Urgot. Urgot again in the mid lane. I don't know. I think, I really think that this was, uh, is a tough matchup for Urgot. Trying to bring Urgot's win rate down to 50%. <laughs> Hey, AD Urgot is still at 100%. That's true. Okay, if we differentiate by lanes, yes, then AD Urgot is 100%, mid Urgot is zero. So what is the top laner going to be for Nodge in the Empire? Rumble's still up. Yeah, they, they may be a little bit worried about that, though, because then they're going to be really reliant on double Zonia's Hourglass timings with TF and Rumble in order to yeah. be strong in some of these team fights. What about Scion? Or Nar? Or Fizz? Yep, top lane Fizz. Sure, why not? If they really want to abuse Lilac, they certainly <laughs> can do this and keep you on know, courting top lane with TF. Their game plan really doesn't have to change. You know, that is true. That Fizz can be pretty abusive, and it looks like that's what Najin's going to try to do. It's going to be an AD Fizz, Trinity Force into uh, right. Frozen Heart. Okay. Well, they really want to kill. They really want to kill Lilac to the degree that Duke is going ignite teleport. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is uh, this is not going to be good for Lilac, I think. Yeah, I mean, you kind of do. You have to try to lane swap in this situation. Uh, you could, Does it even but matter? If, eventually they're going to end up in a one v one. I am definitely will want to try and lane swap. Yeah. But whether or not they're actually going to succeed, we'll see if there's some fancy level wards at level one for Najin. Well, Fizz is a type of champion as well, too, that can kind of just playful trickster through all the hard engage and then jump right onto Sivir and blow her up as well, too. So it's a bit risky. It's a bit scary. Yeah, you can also, but you can also lock down Fizz the instant he lands with Urgot and try and get him into a less advantageous position. So the really scary thing for Najin is not only their early kill pressure, but also the fact that they have a very strong 1-3-1 one, one split push comp. They have a TP on TF to get him in, so they can 1-3-1 one, one really, really effectively with this. They'll have a, a Lich Bane and a Trinity Force more than likely to split and take down towers. So if Naja plays this right, should be OQ, pure and watch in the mid lane, and if they get collapsed on double TPs right in the back to help out with the fight. Could be pretty spectacular, actually. It's gonna be pretty crazy either way, I am. Fighting for survival here against Najin. Can they prevent the 2-0? Let's get in the game and find out. And here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. I am versus Najin the Empire. The I am fans not giving up yet. The I am fans really are some of the most resilient fans in all of League of Legends. And look, the proper Sejuani skin is being used oh, at long last. Oh, really? Watch is the chosen one. Which which one is that? The Bear Rider Sejuani skin. See, uh, he wasn't the chosen one last game, I guess, then. And mixing it up. Oh. He, he knew he was wrong. That was actually what his coach said to him in between the games. Oh, really? He's like, like, geez, I mean, your <laughs> gameplay was good, but don't you know that the Bear Rider Sejuani skin is by far the most superior Sejuani skin available. Well, you know what I like about League of Legends, Monte Cristo? Bears, Ryder Sejuani skins? The gameplay. <laughs> I don't waste time with silly skins. <laughs> I believe I've heard someone say that in the recent past. <laughs> well, Najin getting uh, some pretty deep wards in early on. They really want to try to get the 1v1 between Duke and Lilac. 
Of course, and they want to try to prevent any sort of uh, sapling opening, which every Maokai on planet Earth does. Maybe other planets, too. Are there trees on other planets? The ping's got to be terrible, though. <laughs> well, looks like we are going to see a lane swap initiated by Najin here. They may have been trying to call it, but they're not going to get that advantage, even though they did have a ward right there by the Krugs to see the Leona. Yep. We'll have to see how well this Fizz does in this situation. Yeah, looks like Duke's just going to jungle follow for a little while. Understandable. But yeah, when that Fizz gets in lane with Lilac, things can get a bit, a bit bloody. Yeah, both, both teams able to freeze in this scenario. So there's not going to be a tremendous advantage. And wow, that's Lilac going with the early port this time, even though the wave is pushing out. And he saw Thresh in the top side. Yep, he's going to actually mess with Thresh's recall just a little bit. And uh, Lilac this time around is not going to be punished for that early teleport with a big dive or anything like that. Which is a little bit surprising, don't you think? That uh, it's something that's so predictable, but they just decide not to punish it. Well, game. they he didn't push, he didn't TP in as the wave collapsed. So you yeah, can't true. punish it yet. You'd have to wait for a second or start reversing the wave now. And that takes some time to auto down those minions. So also uh, Najin's. Top and junglers started bottom side, so they weren't really in position in order to do that. So Lilac was unlikely to get dove right there. Well, it is going to be pretty tough for Duke to get any CS early on, but he will be able to get a little bit of XP anyway. But this will be a bit of an edge. Oh, Q and Lilac, Lilac. Are really going at it yeah, right no away right here. Oh, Q will be behind on levels due to that XP share early on, and Lilac actually uh, did hit level two off of the Raptor camp really quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so watch there. But it doesn't look like he's going to get a chance to try to go in on the Lilac just yet. Just putting down that ward. And now Duke's starting to get a bit of CS as this wave pushes in and he's got the support from Pure as well. Yeah, Pure, who has been such a good Thresh player this season so far in the games that we've seen from him. So yeah, he has. I'm excited to catch that again. And Duke you know, will actually start to pick up some of that experience in gold right now. Yeah, you notice uh, Pure actually playing this really smart. Uh, we saw Sunstar walk in easily within flay range, but you don't want to mess up the CS for your top laner when you need it so much at this point in the game. So holding off on that. Not very bloodthirsty, but necessary, unfortunately. I understand. <laughs> do you? I do. I don't have to like it, but I understand. All right, Tank actually... Time to go for a Doran's Ring this game right after his flask. The extra sustain and... Yeah, he's getting poked out just like he did in game number one, but didn't seem to matter once he hit level six. Here's Ares. And he still does have that wave clear advantage. Yep. Especially once he throws it, goes back and gets a tier. This won't be doing too much damage at all. Yeah. For a little bit. Oh, Duke. Taking the uh, scenic route <laughs> through the Fancy moves. minion wave, yeah. Showing off a bit. You know, Sonstar against Fizz, you'd think there'd be like a sushi chef, Siver, you know? <laughs> a circular knife, that'd be some impressive sushi cutting. I know, right? I bet, uh, I bet she would like to make sushi out of Fizz. He's kind of a fish person. I think that sounds unethical. A little bit, yeah. I mean, we just, he does have a consciousness. I think I saw a documentary about this once. <laughs> Making sushi out of people? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not, no, not, no, that's not. <laughs> oh, I meant really? ethical uh, fishing and stuff, you know? Ah, I yeah. see. <laughs> that's not what you meant. You, sure, took that to, you took that to a really dark place, didn't you? You implied that it was going to a dark place. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say I starred in it. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> That's your next career choice. <laughs> Can cannibal? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't think that pays very well. I don't think it has a good retirement plan either. Depends on how much you like prison, I guess. Yeah, seriously. Wow, that really did get dark, didn't it? <laughs> it's just a mood. It's a mood this match is putting us in, you know? We're watching the, the soul of I Am just be crushed. 
Well, it's not getting crushed so far this game. You know, not, only, not as much in this game. Nothing's really happened yet, even though Tank is level six right now. Yeah. Pings down in the bottom lane from IM. Could go for a move on to Sonstar here, perhaps. This is a lane swap spin about as standard as standard can be. But whether, yep. whether or not we do see OQ head into the bottom side right now, and he will, actually, mm. alongside TF. Okay, so Duke's now we're going to get the 1v1. Yeah, nope, a grab on to Tucson, but Pure taking a lot of poke in return for that. Wow, he was way down there by himself, wasn't he? Well, they thought IM was going to be recalling right there. Instead, they decided to push up. Actually, uh, Najin lost about half a wave right there because Duke couldn't get out in time. And Duke also was running uh, a lot of MR this game, if we take a look at his stats right there. Uh, early on, so he definitely wanted to be in the 1v1. It looks like it looks to me like Najin tried to call that lane swap, and then I am just mind game them into the bottom side. So uh, Najin, I don't think really wanting the early lane swap in that situation. He will be heading into lane with that Sheen, however, and using that TP. But still, Duke lost a lot of XP as a result of them switching Lucian over, and you can see he's actually two levels down on Lilac right now. Wow. Due to that. So a bit of a sloppy transfer. And that was because they thought Sonstar and Tucson were recalling, but actually Pure in the bottom side went to harass them during that and caused them to walk forward and continue to push out that wave. So their timing wasn't perfect. And that's a lot of the reason why uh, Duke fell behind right there. So just some of those complexities about recall timings and lane swaps, how you can miss out on good chunks of minion waves as a result. And also uh, Duke was duo laning with Pure during that period, so. Yeah, well Duke has that level six now and he put a ward down in River as well, so now Lilac needs to be pretty careful because here's where the ganks in top lane are going to start to happen. Let's see what they can do. Lilac playing this one very, very safely. And again, you know, in a much better situation this game on Maokai than on uh, a Rumble or something like that, a more fragile top laner. Yeah, still win this 1-3-1 gets rolling. If Najin does it properly with the TF and with the, uh, the Fizz, it's going to be really scary for Incredible Miracle because they don't have a lot of good answers to that. And their wave clear during this in this game is entirely dependent on Sivir. Here we go. Oh, oh, teleport coming in. Ooh, Tank not quite able to get in on the Sonstar. Sonstar getting back under turret with that ult. Something was a little bit out of sync there. Yeah, they can still go ahead and make a move on the Dragon as a result of this. However, they have forced them back. And, and they it, will. It is a, they abuse the blue transfer. Again, Najin really looking for those timing windows and getting something out of those TF ports at any given moment. They, unless oh. something goes really wrong, they're going to get the dragon and get out. Now, Tucson made a good try, but Najin able to get that dragon pretty easily. Meanwhile, Duke getting jumped on by Lilac, having to play full Trickster's way out of there. Sansar very low. OQ, can he get the kill? He can, first blood. And I don't know what happened there. Sonstar just getting way too close, and without yeah. that, uh, without without the ult to get away, what are you going to do? Right. Also, you know, he just that was a very awkward situation. He was on the bottom side alone. Yeah. All the other members of his team were on the top side of Dragon, and he got way too close. All right, we got to see this here. Oh, calling. nice calling. Yes, Dash forward. Damage. There's the heal used, and the heal used by OQ as well, right there. So. Sonstar just starting out that way too close with an ult disadvantage. Quickly taken out in a 1v1. OQ 92 to 66 CS right here too. So really starting to take it home alongside that first blood. That yeah. was a good, it was a good TF play. And again, you see, you see I am. They they played back that time. They realized Frozen was getting blue, but it didn't stop the dragon from being taken. So Najin really on point today, knowing how to, they have their, their conditionals set up. Okay, we're gonna try this. If they try to blue, do blue, we'll see where we can gank. Okay, there's maybe an opportunity on the bottom side. At least we can have Sivir blow or ult and then go ahead and take a safer dragon if that doesn't work. And even then they still get the kill on the Sivir because that ult was blown. So I think that the team coordination from Najin today is much more thoughtful than it usually has been in the past. Yeah. Seems like things are starting to come together finally a little bit for these guys. And remember... Well, th that's a dangerous is, thing to say. I feel like I well, said that ten times this season. Uh, yeah, I know about them and CJ. But it, it seems like this is a team that came in as number two in the region after the preseason. They fell off really hard in the regular season. And it's too late for them now. 
but maybe they can come into summer with a little bit more strength that they can keep this up. Yeah, I just, this team is so confusing, Della. Yeah. Najin is so confusing. A lot of, uh, a lot of weird roster moves. Well, it's, it's not even just that, it's the, that there's that aspect to it, but it's also just in terms of their performance, it's, it's either so spectacular, so disappointing. It's and usually it's not game to game. It's like match to match. Yeah. It's very strange. Either way, slight gold lead for Najin. They've got that first blood as well. And we'll see if I am has a way to kind of come back from this at all. Tank has been about 20 CS down to frozen this entire game, but he's certainly got a chance to go get some kills if he uh, is able to do that with the ult. Otherwise, he'll have a chance to catch up. Not really too far behind. Yeah. Duke a little bit of far away from being able to do anything right here. And Lilac going for the super safe build of two Doran's rings into Catalyst, so. Yeah. It's really going to eliminate a lot of the threat, at least in terms of a 1v1 from Duke, because you have all that HP and sustain early on into the game. So it'll force that TF ult to be used on him. It's going to be used at all. Uh, but they do need to make some sort of play. They want to slow this Maokai down, because in the late game, they may have some issues actually taking him out. Man, Najin has just pulled back, and both teams, or IM rather, has just pulled back and is playing so much safer this game. Najin getting, not getting really a ton of opportunities like they did in game number one. Right. Well, they may try and make a play on the bottom side again. A little bit more difficult, of course. You're dealing with the hard CC from Leona, spell shields, and the Sivir ultimate. Instead, they're going to go after Rek'Sai directly. Yep. Good wards, actually. Really good wards based on the Sivir recall. All right, there he's going back now and pretty passive point in the game. Yeah, they're gonna take a tower though. OQ finds this so. one uncontested. Wow. He's got such an advantage on Sonstar. Yeah, a lot of damage onto Sonstar as well too. Tucson coming in, but there's no follow-up if he tries to go for an ult. Not really much of one anyway. Whoa, tries to go in, oh, that was interesting. <laughs> Deucin going to where he was. Meanwhile, Duke putting some damage onto Lilac. Fought half health himself, though, so he'll have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, Lilac Duke is pretty has, tanky. Duke has still his ult at Ignite up, though, so you have to be careful while the Maokai ult is still down. Does have that pretty short cooldown on it, but does give you a bit of a window. Yep, true enough. Nice ward deep in the lane as well, just to make sure they keep track of TF's movements even when there's not a minion wave there, it just expired, however. Yep. Well, they might have to worry about that with the dragon coming up pretty soon. Oh. All right, now, are you going to go? Operation, get Duke. Duke, oh, he knows what's up, though. He's backing off immediately. Yep. Knows that it's not safe up there. and. Yeah, absolutely, you need to back off. TF's not there, you don't see Urgot in the mid lane. Uh, there's nobody in the bot lane either. That's a prime time for supports to roam up into the top side. Right. And a good time to get a, a gank as well too, right before Dragon comes up. Pretty helpful. About 10 seconds till that happens. That's just good, good game sense right there from Duke. Vision now, is really Windu good for Najin right now. Yeah, when to apply pressure in. Yeah. Now just been repeatedly invading that bottom side jungle just to get the wards in thanks to OQ's pressure and OQ pushing that wave up. Wow, I am. This is this is a it's bit bold. of a dicey position for them. Well, let's see. OQ is still down at the bottom of the map. I am. If they know that, they can press this advantage for the moment. Now OQ coming back to river again. Yeah, but they have a big wave that's developing at the bottom side. I am is going to lose that into the turret if they're not careful. Yep. And the Rift Coward taken out. Oh, oh, Ares messed wow. up his spike right there. Yeah, well, they're going to go in onto Pure. Pure in a little bit of trouble, but there comes Sejuani. Watch, waiting for an opportunity here. They do get the support on Najin. Meanwhile, Lilac in the back line is a bit low. Tank coming in with the Gate of Destiny. Watch, locked up. He may go down. Meanwhile, Tank picks up the kill on Rek'Sai. Now Najin disengaging. It's one to two. It's been in favor of IM. And Duke getting jumped on as well. A big fight for IM. 
Two to three, and can they, they really can't take the Dragon at this point, not with Oku and Tank still up. Yeah, Oku and Tank still at full HP right there. Lilac yeah. not going to be much use. His oh, teleport frozen. is down, he has to be careful. There's a gold card loaded oh. up, they could turn this one around. Oku still alive for the moment. Frozen really disrespectful. He didn't have any vision in that brush, and to walk up to it yeah. when there's a gold card still available means that he's gonna get poked up. All right, Void Rush coming in after the respawn. Duke still has TP, though. It's true. OQ a little bit low in health, though. He's going to recall. And I am really can't. They're still, you know, not in a position to take this dragon. Yeah, especially with TP disadvantage. So let's take a look at what happened. Pure gets caught out on the side. He will flash and lay down the box right here. It's a good teleport by Lilac right into the front line, even though he does get held up just for a second. Also frozen. Nice ultimate right there to push Watch all the way into the back. And a little bit lucky that Frozen actually survived right there with very low HP. They will take out Duke at the cost of their support. So three for two ultimately in favor of Najin, or in favor of IM rather. Yeah, that's right. But Najin's still with a good position around this dragon with everybody there. Frozen already with QSS this game, very worried about that hard CC that's coming in. Yeah. And the teleport edge that Najin has right now is so big. They're just yep. going to start that dragon without any fear. Look at that. Sansar and Frozen not even there. This is going to be an easy second dragon for Najin. Yep. Solar Flare. Not enough for uh, Tucson to steal that. Would have been awesome if he would have stolen it with Solar Flare, though. Oh, that that would have been, been quite cool. impressive. Yes, it would have. We've seen it stolen with Whirlwind this season from Janna. <laughs> I've stolen dragons with Glitter Lance. Every once in a while, the support just gets that lucky ability in there. I mean, skillful ability in there. Skillful ability. Slips it right in. That's right. The big CS discrepancy between OQ and Sonstar now, though, about yeah. 40 CS up. It's been about 40 for the last five minutes or so. Yeah. Sonstar not ending up quite as well fed after the lane swap. And this could be a successful turret defense. In fact, it will be. And so we'll see how far Najin wants to push this one back up again. You know, is there any way they can use Duke's teleport to make a play at this point? Sure. Use that along with uh, Tank's ultimate, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely have those really surprising five-man plays in this setup if you want to start pushing objectives. In the meantime, Oki going to get a lot of damage down into the top turret for free pretty much right here. Only Rek'Sai wow. up able to defend. Yeah, you're right. He's got pure healing form as well. Wow, that turret taking nearly lethal damage, actually. You know, try and push up mid, but... Tank already back, able to respond to this, and he's got that yep. good wave clear. But they uh, go down tower. anyway. A lot yep. of attack damage between the Urgot and the Sivir and Will. Yeah, they get so it. had Tank been there just a second earlier, it's really hard to see. You have to clear those waves once the minions actually spread out. You want to get them in that line with the wild cards. They're going right. after somebody pure. Oh, Solar Flare into pure again. He drops a box this time. Notch or a watch rather comes over the wall with a big ultimate tank. Just destroying people with the cards now. And there's two kills already for OQ. Oh, tank uses a gate to get in onto Frozen. He gets out with the QSS right away out of that gold card. But watch with the engage again onto Lilac. A gold card onto Lilac now. And Duke just getting into the back lines all over Frozen. And this could be an ace. In fact, it will be a clean ace at just 20 minutes for Najin. And that is exactly the danger that this team presents. You have to oh, man. be so respectful. They didn't have TP advantage right there. And Tank yep. and Duke able to arrive at that fight in a moment's notice. Wow. Tank also and Duke had both hit item power spikes with Zonia's and Trinity Force available. Zonia's didn't even have to be used in that fight even. So a perfect ace and two turrets in mid lane for Najin the oh Empire, and my, suddenly this is game is uh, just blown wide open. Najin did such a good job of exploiting this. I mean, look, the Sivir ult's already down. You know Leo ult, he tried to make a pick with it, is down already. Nice play. Wash hit, hits a great Sejuani ult in the side, and then they're all just focused right there. Ares goes down to OQ nearly instantly. They try and disengage, but Duke can catch up. Gold card into the QSS onto Frozen. He still takes a bunch of damage and watch. Trying to tangle up with them again. Duke able to playful trickster his way back into the back line and then OQ flashes forward for Sonstar. What a great turnaround from Najin. That was a really nice team fight. And tank again. Really well, uh I am really well. overcommitted right there. They used two 
ults to not even kill Thresh. Thresh caught them, and then they walked into the box and the choke yeah. as well, so they got all locked up in time for Najin to use those TPs. Well, they pretty much served themselves up on a silver platter to watch with that Sejuani ultimate, and it was downhill from there. Very good kind of hair trigger response, though. Oh, they're going to try to go in with the Siveral. Tank slowed down by the Solar Flare. Watch disengaging. Najin just backing away, and it looks like I am's not really wow, going to get anything out of this. Righteous Glory used right there, but he yeah. was too late for that. I am just not having a very high level of coordination this game. Yep. Dragon in two now. And so I am at least going to take the opportunity to try to get some wards down and get the Rift Sculler. Have that vision for a little while anyway. But Duke, the split push beginning. Doesn't, I don't think there's really a whole lot that Lilac can do against this. Duke already with his frozen heart too. Oh, watch over the wall. Gated Destiny used Tucson in a lot of trouble. Let's see where the gold, gold card lands. It's going to be on to Tucson. An easy pick there. Ares just kind of watching from the brush as his support dies. And Najin, this jungle is theirs at this point. Wow, Lilac. Lilac. Jeez. I'm trying to duel with Duke right now. Now, the Frozen Arc isn't that. very helpful against Maokai, obviously, as an armor item. But getting those extra cooldowns does help you output yep. that damage. It's all about the CDR in that particular duel. Nope, no blue buff. But you can get the Grub. So he's got that going for him. I guess he does, Doa. He's going for the Grub. And a 7,000 gold lead now for Najin. So a little bit more of a passive start, but when the uh, team decisions are starting to be made, Najin is just coming up. Najin's played all very aces. well this game. Yeah, they have. And they've been consistently one step ahead of their opponent. Their team fight execution has been excellent. Sejuani is Russian dancing on top of a bear. I guess so, which seems kind of dangerous. You have to have a really well-trained bear to do that, but <laughs> I guess she does. I guess she does. Most bears don't like to be uh, step danced on top of. Is that your personal experience or are you theorizing? I, yeah, you know, back when I was in my bear wrestling phase, I was a big Zangief fan, right? So, you know, tried <laughs> it for a while. It was too easy, so I decided to become an esports caster. Yeah, there you go. Much more difficult, this job. Yeah, definitely. Usually, bear wrestlers just, uh, you know, move over, give us their seats at the bar. That's what usually happens. They're intimidated. I am coming in. Can they make a play here on the Najin as they go for this dragon? Najin with the disengage, backing off for the moment. They can totally give this dragon up, too. It's not the biggest deal. They're going to take it anyway, though. Watch is going to get it with the smite. Meanwhile, Ares gets locked up a little bit. Lilac looking for an opportunity to get in the back line. Pure all over Tucson and Duke backing away for just a moment. And now Najin turns. There's the culling. Just forces I am back. Oh, the uh, ult from Duke didn't really hit anybody, but watch coming in on the Lilac anyway. Frozen has not lost a lot of health yet in this fight, but neither is Oku, and Oku is going to start to do a lot of damage. Tank picks up the kill. Oku picks up one as well. Nobody on Najin dead just yet. Oku gets brought in by the Dark Passage, and Najin, they're, they're as intimidating as I was when I was a bear wrestler. <laughs> wow. Really nicely played there. OQ ate the Solar Flare, but has that early QSS, bought it before he even finished his uh, Ghost Blade, and was able to get out of that and kite it out immediately. A really good play around the Dragon right there. Not grouped up so that there wasn't that AOE CC really easily able to be used by Incredible Miracle. And the follow-up, chasing people down. I mean, to the degree Lilac tried to use that Righteous Glory to disengage, which doesn't sound very righteous nor glorious. <laughs> That's true. Certainly not glorious. <laughs> righteous coward, yeah. cowardice, is that what we call Maybe when you try and use it to run away? Expedient retreat. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What's, uh, what's the opposite of glory is like shame, right? Uh, so, yes. The, st the yeah. strategic withdrawal, withdrawal, as they say. The fleeing shame. <laughs> That's what the item is called if you run away. <laughs> oh, poor Lilac. That's sad. But deserved. Well, Najin again, way far ahead, and uh, looks like Tank is going to turn around onto Lilac. Gate of Destiny used. Duke looking for an opportunity, gets him with the Earth. Going to get out on the Lantern as well, too. Najin's like, yeah, whatever. Pretty sure Tank red carded him right there instead of gold carding him. <laughs> hey, it's better than a blue card. At least the red card does some decent damage, huh? And it slows. Yeah. 
That's right. Oh, Siveralt activated. Tank could be in a bit of trouble. He's got no flash. Position reversers. There's Azonia's watch trying to save his mid laner, but no chance Tank is going to go down. So a pick there. Whoops. I am has tried that like three times now, and that was the first time it worked for them. Yeah, when you have a TF with no summoners and no alt, you can finally catch him. But he was overextended under that circumstance, so can I am convert this into a yeah. tower? It's kind of funny watching watching that. There's fight no too. wave clear, so yes, they're gonna get at least one right here. All right. Not good good play by I am. Every other time, Najin has been able to sidestep the several old Leona engage that IM has been going for, and now they actually make it work. I mean, IM can definitely do well as long as they can continue to make picks, just because Duke pretty much has to keep split pushing right here. He's going Blade of the Ruined King as his next item. Wow. It's funny seeing watching that pick on the tank, because it was one of those really half-hearted jungler moves where you come in, you like auto one of the people in the 3v1, and they're like, all right, good luck, see ya. <laughs> OQ, oh. Oh, he popped the Omus. <laughs> OQ almost did some OQ things right there. He did. That was almost an OQ moment right, <laughs> right there, that's true. Oh, Duke jumped on with the Zenith Blade. Goes back in, I don't know why he did that. Position reverser, Duke in a little bit of trouble here. He drops his ultimate, I don't think he's gonna get anything out of this, nope. Well, Najin's starting to kind of do the Najin thing. Well, actually, he distracted them up there, but if they give up Baron, and they're going to give up the Baron right now, Najin... Is this going to be another uh, Baron for Inhibitor here? Yeah, Just, probably. Uh, I think it will be, yeah. This Baron's going down pretty quick, and I've got a feeling that Inhibitor is not going to be going down quick at all. I mean, 7,000 gold lead. This is a great trade for Najin. Now, this looks the way, familiar, doesn't The it? way they got it was a little silly, but this is still a good trade. Gate of Destiny used just to kind of keep an eye on people. And there's an inhibitor traded for Baron once again. Worked out pretty well for Najin in game number one, didn't it? Yeah, there's pretty much no way that I am could fight their way out of this one. Yeah. Even if they do have some better siege this game, they've got a lot of poke coming in from Sibir and Urgot and a good front line to absorb and siege. Meanwhile, Najin is going to want to split push still. The tank finally moving towards that Lich Bane. Could have started the split push a little bit earlier if he had gotten the Lich Bane instead of the Death Cap. Yeah. But I, they've been team fighting so well I was with, with say. TF. It's, it's okay. Well, uh, there's been so many team fights, too. He's, he yeah. hasn't had as much of a chance to actually split push. Obviously, he's done very well for himself. And they, oh, yeah. it, due to their lead, they can force these fights. And the fact that he has more damage does mean a lot for them. But a Dragon up in a minute. This would be number four for Najin. And so, uh, being that the Dragon is coming up, so soon as well too that kind of occupies part of the baron buff that i am got as well yeah they are going to have to contest it right here najin is getting pretty close to max tax at this point yeah if you let him have that fourth dragon then suddenly you've got this huge amount of pressure objective wise on both sides of the river and it's becomes a bit too much with all the split pushing going on at the same time duke has managed to be extremely annoying so far this game yep the Lilac still not very much MR to deal with the TF. TF with a lot of AP at this point. Hmm. Now they're going to make some moves on the river. Dragon and 10. I am kind of needs to fight this. If they can win a fight here, they can maybe get a turret or two out of it. We'll see what happens. Dusan getting poked a bit by OQ. Najin. Kind of waiting, teleport coming in. All right, Duke is nearby, doesn't need to use his teleport. Good retreat right there on the home guard engage. Yep. From Najin, they already have a flank set up so that they can get Fizz into the back line. And again, this is a dragon that Najin can totally give up if they want to, but they've got such a strong team fight. They're coming in, they're not gonna get the dragon, but here we go, Sivir ult activated. I am's gonna Righteous try to chase down, down well. Duke. That's right, but they're not gonna catch him. So I am gets the dragon, gets out, but they're taking damage on their Nexus turrets from super minions. I really think that was a smart play by Najin. You wait, see if they're going to make a mistake. They're going yep. to lose this uh, oh, Nexus wow. turret as well Man. from the super minion push. Now they're rotating immediately into the top side. Very clean play from Najin. Uh, I am invested a lot in terms of ultimates to make that play, and they wasted a lot of time with the Baron buff, and they still lost something. So it was still an even trade for Najin, and they only have to wait this one out. Now they're here trying to take out Ooh. the Tier 2. But they're not overcommitting. Najin looks 
tight in this late game, not really giving their enemies too much to work with. Yeah, not a lot. And making the preferable trades. That should be the end of the Baron buff now for IM as well. Sanajan really not losing much of anything aside from that dragon. And everyone hanging out in the fountain, just taking a breather, you know. Why not? Chatting with whatever animal will sell you items there. All right, pure popping the iron elixir. He's huge. That is a big skeleton. No kidding. You know what they should make is a... Uh, what, did, what did Thresh look like when he was alive with those... Uh, that's a good like, question. Hook dreadlocks? He has bones for hair? Like, what? what's going on there? Maybe those are bones from other people, and he just, like, attached them to his skull when he became undead. Can you, can you modify yourself Wait. like that when you're undead? That would be I awesome. Th I think you can kind of do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> Why not give yourself, like, awesome wings? Like, scary, like, skeletal wings, but they still work for some reason. I mean, look at his, his hook dreads. Yeah. See, the thing is, is with that, you can't go hiking because those are going to get caught on branches all the time. <laughs> it would make uh, heavy metal concerts really violent as oh, well. Oh, jeez, yeah, that'd be dangerous for everyone around him. <laughs> He's the king of the mosh pit. No kidding. No one wants to mosh with Thresh. <laughs> it's true. Well, except masochists. That's true. So Mundo would be there <laughs> moshing with Thresh, having a great time. Yep. Sounds like fun. Does it? Nope. <laughs> so literally exactly the opposite of what you just told me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was sarcasm. <laughs> you know, it's when you uh, kind of say something, but you say it in a way that it means the opposite of what you say. I only know Kappa, Doa. So, uh, I'm part of the new internet generation. Oh, I'm sorry. It sounds like fun, Kappa. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> I no longer understand context. Oh, I'm sorry. Or so tone really of voice or real human interaction. Yeah, you got that nailed down. <laughs> that internet thing is, uh, you got it, man. You know, put on the fedora, you're there. That's what I think of you kids today. Mamanti. <laughs> <laughs> These kids, get off my lawn. I don't have a lawn. I have an apartment. I guess I could install some grass. You get on that. Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll have a grass floor in my living room. Well, I'll have to mow my living room, though. Yeah, that'd be a bummer. Yeah. I'd have to get, like, you know, get, like, a, a cow or something to graze in my living room. At least your dog wouldn't have to go outside to go to the bathroom anymore. Well, she doesn't already. It's like one of those, I've got one of those little, like, apartment mat things she's trained to use. It's really convenient. Yeah, so I wouldn't really change anything. Actually, it would be worse because I wouldn't know where she would then, you know? I don't want, like, a minefield of dog poop in my living room. It sounds unpleasant. That really does. Oh, we're just waiting for this Baron to come up right yep, now. Pretty much, Najin just kind of hanging out. They're like, yeah, we'll just keep the lanes pushed, wait for the Baron. We're going to dance around Baron while yep. Duke applies split push pressure to the bottom lane. He keeps on hiding in the jungle right now. Make sure that he can get that pressure down. And they have to send somebody back, and that somebody will be Lilac. Hey, Lilac, he's 2-2-2 uh, two, two and two this game. Positive KDA. Wait. What's four divided? Yeah, he's positive KDA. It's one. I did math. Wait, four divided by two is two. It's two. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> I was just oh, made a realization. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't, even, I don't even know if I can cast this. Let's do it. Duke. Duke's going to kill Lilac. There's my play-by-play. -play. GG. Oh, wow, I'm bad at math. <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was, that was bad even for you. Dude, I'm an, I'm an art major and proud of it. I was an English major, and I could still do that. I could, I could draw you a picture of 2 plus 2. <laughs> I can't. All right, well, I'm not a good stats Dodge guy. Good, Dodge is going to get the uh, Baron buff right here. You bet they are. Let's concentrate on that, shall we? Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow, oh my. Oh, they're getting that. Oh, they got it. They got the Baron, Monty. I'm so now, excited. <laughs> now they can push into the base and end the game. And well, That's what you would like them to do, but actually they're going to oh, recall first to buy items. All right.
Duke is there. He is the ultimate tormentor of Lilac. That's true. He really is this season. He's going to appear in Lilac's dreams tonight. <laughs> he really, laughing. this season, he really has been Lilac's arch nemesis. It's pretty ridiculous. No kidding. The number of 1v1s he has had on Lilac this season. Well, you know, when you have an arch nemesis, it really should be like an even contest. So it's really not. Somebody should make a montage. Oh, boy. It's just mean. Duke has been quite instrumental in the, the suffering of the Lilac. <laughs> And that's going to be dragon number four for Najin. Yep. It was. All right, well, Lilacs can get wolves, but I think it's too late to really benefit from uh, getting gold from jungle camps. It's never got, too late. He's still got those two Doran's rings. He's styling. He's got the bling. He's got the bling. Yep, sick helmet, a cape, a boots, and a... Uh, Frozen Rock. He's like he's like the Egyptians. If he's gonna go, if he's gonna die, he's gonna do it with a lot of bling on. Hey man, why not? <laughs> why not? Oh, Duke's looking for another one right here. Yep, he is. <laughs> he could get it too. Maybe not without the ignite, but he has his hex trigger now and his finished blade of the Ruin King. Well. Another split pushing shenanigans, and here's the 1 3 1 coming in right now. TF holding down the mid side. There we go. Yomu's culling, pushing back Najin, or I am rather, just for a little bit. Oh boy, here we go again. Duke is just, he is just, his, it's his goal in life to just make Lilac miserable. I think, I think it's working. I think it is too. Lilac can't actually even kill these minions. Like, I'm, I'm serious, he really can't. And there goes the mid lane turret. Oh, oh, they try for the engage. They get it slow on to pure. Ares comes in for the sun tank, just going to teleport back for a little bit. The kills start to come in for Najin already. Two's in a lot of trouble. Frozen. Duke's just winning the game right now. Yeah, that's right. Frozen running is all <laughs> as fast as his four legs can carry him. Duke's going to just kill the Nexus turret. LOL. Oh, going to go in. Take some damage. Watch there for the follow up. Frozen getting blown up as well, too. A little bit of turret damage on to watch, but it's going to be a pretty clean fight. Oh, playfully trickstering out of there. Oh, OQ. Oh, man, that was so close. <laughs> OQ almost made an OQ moment, but it's going to be a 2-0 for Najin. It's over. Wow. It's over, Monty. Really great series from Najin. I, this is the team that I want to see more of, Doha. Yeah, Tank this is came the out good very Najin. strong today. I think that they did a really good job of executing their game plan of getting their side lanes ahead, and that's what works. They close much better today. Really yep. clean play. And this is the Najin that we had all been hoping for. Now, of course, it was against IM, which has been struggling as of late, especially in the latter half of this season. And Najin out of playoff contention right now, but they certainly on paper have the talent to make a big splash next season, especially well, if they, they play like that. They certainly do. A win for Najin and Fire. And so after a, a pretty embattled season, 